This presentation is brought to you by the Beljanski Foundation. Over 50 years of research towards curing cancer the natural way. So we are going to be talking about oral optimization. And uh, the analogy that I like to use is if you have a vehicle, a car that has eight cylinders, we want it to work on all eight cylinders and not just two. So how do we get there? We're going to cover that today. Uh, your mouth is saying something. Are you listening? It says a lot about different things. For example, inflammation, biome, acidity level, uh, not just in the mouth, but in the rest of the body. Uh, it can give us insight about bone integrity and how well your immune system is working. And also it can show us a little bit about cardiovascular health and brain health. And uh, the gums are so vascular, there's a lot of blood supply in the mouth. It's literally a direct access to the bloodstream. So it's important to have healthy gums uh, this way you limit the inflammation in the rest of the body, and it's an indicator of, of inflammation. So um, it's important to look at the mouth as a portal, as a portal to many different systems. The obvious one is the, the digestive system, because when we eat, the first thing um, that happens is you put food in your mouth, and that's when the digestive process begins. But also, the, like we said before, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, and uh, the immune system. A uh, couple of important things with gum health. If we don't have optimum health, like gingivitis, it can lead to different things. Like for example, for pregnant women, premature babies, low birth weight babies, uh, for diabetics, it makes diabetic control worse. And sometimes it actually triggers diabetes. When things get worse and it goes into periodontitis, which is an unreversible, irreversible gum disease, it can actually lead to uh, trans ischemic attacks, like mini strokes, and also uh, heart attacks, cardiovascular disease. Uh, we found that flossing and having excellent oral hygiene limits your C-reactive protein, which is an inflammation marker. Um, and a lot of times you see something in the mouth and it indicates that something else serious is going on, like leukemia or cancer. Because in the mouth we have thousands and thousands of bacteria. And if you have good balance, that's very healthy. But many times we don't have good balance, and this is what happens. You literally have a bacterial terrorist camp in your mouth. Um, is it because that's how you were born, and it's genetic, and you inherited from mom and dad? Or is it because of your lifestyle? Or is it because of some supplements or malnutrition that occurs in your mouth? Maybe you have a vitamin, vitamin B deficiency, or maybe you're taking a steroid, and it's messing up that balance in your mouth. So. What's really, really key is to keep everything under control. And what I mean by that is we're constantly having things going on wrong in our mouth and we're constantly trying to improve them. Uh, there are hidden infections that we can't see and it's important to identify those early so we can treat them effectively. And uh, prevention is key, right? Early detection for me is too late. To prevent it, it's the ideal strategy. So that's what I mean about oral optimization. Uh, yes, being okay is good, but I want it to be the best. And how do we get there? Well, we want the best of all worlds, meaning Eastern medicine, the tried, true, and tested things, low tech. We want Western medicine, which is high tech and more um, developed, if you will, biology, right? Technology, everything. Um, <clears throat> so integrative dentistry, similar to integrative medicine, you want to make sure you encompass everything. So holistic, meaning keeping the whole body in mind when you're looking at these uh, treatments. Uh, so biomimetic, it's a Greek word that comes from um, bio, which is life, mim mimic, meaning like nature. So everything that we think about with treatment should be bio-friendly, should uh, work just like nature does. Uh, so technologically advanced dentistry, meaning diagnostics, right? We want to diagnose first and see what's going on, and then we can figure out what pathways we're going to go down. Uh, sophisticated surgical care and restorative care are, I think, are paramount in dentistry today uh, by al always keeping that biological approach, right? Mimicking nature. Okay, so if you can't see it, you can't treat it. So it's really important to have advanced diagnostic measures. For example, we can use transillumination, which is light energy. We can use diagnostic lasers, similar, uh, similar to like Doppler lasers, right? Doppler uh, effect. But we also have fluorescence. So if you look at a mouth and you see something suspicious, you can actually shine a different type of light. And if it appears dark, now you can do either a biopsy or a, or a cytology um, test so you can find out what else is going on. And I think that's really important because if you catch oral cancer, for example, early, it's completely curable. 
And I have been fortunate to have helped some of my patients with that. Uh, and that's really, really rewarding. Um, salivary analysis. As simple as drooling into a cup and figuring out what is your resting saliva? What is your stimulated saliva? Is that within that normal range? What about your pH? Do you naturally produce acidic saliva? Well, that's working against you with regards to teeth and gums. Uh, what about enzymes? We have certain enzymes. Now, some people don't have functional enzymes in their, in their saliva, and they are the ones that get in trouble. You've met people that brush all the time and they still get cavities. Why is that? We want to find out the etiology. That's the reason, the root cause of why they're having these issues and how can we help them. Uh, so how can we help them? These are some custom-tailored prevention measures that we use. These are all biologic ways of, of doing things. For example, oil pulling. It's a combination of uh, coconut oil, sesame oil, uh, a couple of drops of peppermint, and as you're leaving that in the mouth, it causes a suspension of bacteria. The bacteria really get drawn into that liquid, and then you spit it out. Um, other ways of, of battling um, these diseases are supplements like xylitol gum. You can chew gum maybe three or four times a day. And xylitol is a naturally found sugar that cannot get metabolized by bacteria. So as these bacteria are susceptible to these um, sugars, they, s they slowly die. But also, chewing gum uh, stimulates your salivary flow, so it's like your body is helping yourself keep everything nice and clean. So I like that. That's a natural way of doing things. Essential oils. I mentioned peppermint earlier. Um, Do-it-yourself toothpaste. If you mix some equal parts of baking soda and peroxide, now you have something that's kind to the body. It breaks down into water and oxygen. There are anaerobes, which are bacteria that don't like oxygen. So now you're exposing them to oxygen, and they naturally get under control. Probiotics. I think this is brilliant. Oral probiotics, not probiotics for your gut. These are freeze-dried bacteria, harmless bacteria that compete for the same nutrients that the bad bacteria compete for. So now, by natural selection, I'm kind of redefining uh, the balance in the mouth. And I think that's just a very easy way of doing things, and it's no, all natural. And one of my all-time favorites is remineralizing paste. When teeth break down, they do so by demineralizing, right? You, you have acid, and the mineral goes away. Now you can have uh, calcium phosphate salt. It's a paste, and you apply it into the mouth. It's edible. It, it jumps your pH higher. So instantly, you go from acidic pH to a more neutral pH, and the oral environment is optimized. And then if you do need to do some treatment, I would like to do some conservative biological treatment. For example, if you have some stubborn pockets in, in your gums, you can use laser treatment. And laser disinfects, literally disinfects the pocket. And it buys us some time, so it kind of closes like a zipper, right? From the bottom of the pocket to the top. <clears throat> and then you might have to uh, reapply it a few times so that you can treat periodontal disease, gum disease. Uh, but you can also use it for other things like canker sores, cold sores, uh, and, like I said before, periodontal treatment. Um, other things that we can do is host modulation. We don't have enough time to go into it today. Ozone, I think, is great, and we incorporate it not only in uh, periodontal therapy, gum therapy, but also in root canals and treating uh, cavities because it's uh, a very natural way to kill bacteria, viruses, and fungi without harming human, human cells. And safe amalgam removal we're going to jump into in a, a couple of minutes. So biomimetic... Dentistry, like I said before, copying our natural biology. So, for example, if you take a look at a tooth, it's made up in layers, right? So I want to use something different for dentin and something stronger for enamel, <coughs> uh, just like nature intended it to do so. So it's a biocompatible approach. It's a toxin-free dentistry. What is the most natural material that I can use uh, to restore teeth? And there is an association that has come up with some guidelines, and it's a good resource and they're constantly doing research to fine-tune the way we do things. So, amalgams. I know everybody uh, wants to hear about this. It's a big controversy, quote-unquote silver fillings. Well, most of it is mercury, right? Not so much silver. And uh, mercury is a uh, highly toxic substance. And the uh, Environmental Protection Agency says that you cannot throw amalgam in the garbage. You have to do it a certain way. The, the FDA says that amalgam is safe. So, it's not safe for the environment, but it's safe for the mouth. That's a big conflict, right? And it is the most toxic 
non-radioactive -radio element in the mouth. And where does it go? It goes everywhere, the whole body. And these are all the bad things that happen with mercury toxicity. Uh, personality changes, fatigue, depression, even uh, attempted uh, suicide. So it's uh, brain toxic uh, material. And this surprised me when I found out that mercury fillings are the highest source of mercury in, human, in humans today, not tuna fish. <clears throat> I can't show you this video right now, but if you take an extracted tooth with an amalgam and you rub an eraser on it just to demonstrate that it's a little warm, there's actual fumes that you can see with this polarized light. Uh, so when you have a hot, hot cup of coffee or you're chewing something that's very chewy, that vapor comes into the mouth, so you're exposed to it. And it's really the vapor, not the solid, um, that is more, more toxic. And when you look at amalgams, a lot of, a lot of people dentists or, or laymen say, oh yeah, it's been in my mouth for many, many years. It does really well. What a great material. Uh, yes, the material itself might be great for itself, but what does it do to your body? What does it do to your teeth? You can see here that it causes little microfractures because it doesn't behave like dentin and enamel, does it? It expands and contracts and it causes uh, a lot of little microfractures on these teeth. And then they leak and then they become compromised. So there was a study in Europe that was done with a huge sample, 76,000 patients, showing that back teeth that are restored with composite do a lot better than back teeth restored with amalgams. Uh, oral galvanism, it's literally like a battery in your mouth. When you have different types of metals and a medium in the, in the middle, like saliva, you create like a three volt battery. And when you're constantly attacked by this low level current, you can have other nerve issues, neurological issues, TMJ problems uh, with your jaw, uh, and so on and so forth. So how do we take these out? Because there's two times that you're exposed to a high mercury toxin, when you're putting these in and when you're taking them out. So obviously we don't put them in anymore, um, but when we do take them out, we have to protect against the vapors and we have to use a non-latex rubber dam we use a little nose piece here that has oxygen that flows in there. And then we as clinicians have to wear certain protective uh, masks that filter against uh, these toxins. We have a special vacuum that uh, sucks it away. And then right after, there's a protocol that we use uh, to bind any mercury that may have w gone past these, uh, these barriers, like chlorella, um, charcoal, activated charcoal, and uh, bentonite clay. So when we take out the amalgams, we can replace them with more friendly, uh, biofriendly materials like composite, um, like ceramics. Now, if it's a small filling, you can get away with the composite. If it's a large filling, you would need to use something more durable like ceramic. And you can do them either in one visit or two visits uh, with the use of technology. And here you see this digital image. We scan, instead of taking an actual impression, we scan in the mouth and we design it and we mill, mill it. And that's how you have that uh, all, all the the good things about dentistry come together in one spot. So it's like a, it's like a symphony. You have biomimetic meets high tech together. And that's what I mean by um, oral optimization. Let's shift gears for a quick uh, minute and talk a little bit about root canals. There's a lot of root, uh, controversy about root canals. Um, I'm not an all or none type of guy. Uh, there are indications where root canals performed in the right way do very, very well. And there are situations where we're better off just taking the tooth out. Uh, and there have been many studies uh, in that root canals, when not done properly, when they have accessory canals that have not been thoroughly cleaned, can create this pumping effect of toxins into your body. And it's like a low-grade nagging type of thing, uh, and your body needs to be focusing on different things, not these uh, hidden infections. Uh, so the key is to avoid root canals. So if you have a deep cavity, Let's try to be conservative. Let's use ozone. Let's use our technology to figure out if the decay has been removed. Uh, if there's one layer that's really close to the nerve, maybe we can apply certain uh, natural calcium building um, liners to remineralize them and try to be as conservative as possible, disinfect it so we don't go into the nerve. But if we do need to go into the nerve, it has to be done a certain way. For example, we used to think that each tooth has uh, a certain number of canals. Let's say this molar has two canals. We go in there, they're perfectly cylindrical, we use perfectly cylindrical instruments and we clean them out, wash it out with uh, an antibacterial rinse. Well, they're not perfectly cylindrical. As you can see here in this picture, they have these fins and uh, little rivers and accessory canals, and it's very, very difficult to go in there with a cylindrical tool to clean them. But there is a way to do, it, to do that. 
there's something called PIPS, which is photo-induced uh, photoacoustic energy, and it has a laser that uses uh, a special type of water, ozonated water, and it literally creates this uh, uh, stream, this acoustic streaming, and it goes well beyond the canal. So it goes into those little fins, nooks, and crannies. But you have to be able to visualize it and see it the right way. So you can't just use two-dimensional x-rays. You have to use a three-dimensional x-ray so you can figure out. See, a, a premolar is not a premolar is not a premolar. Many different configurations of these uh, canals. So it's important to understand that, diagnose it, and treat it the right way. So as I said before, when done the right way, under the right circumstances, uh, if the tooth does have a good prognosis, it's, it's uh, a very successful treatment. Uh, you must use a rubber dam, and you have to respect the fact that these canals do have accessory canals, and you have to put a permanent uh, seal in, in it. You can't put a temporary that leaks, because then it's, it defeats the whole purpose. So again, 3D diagnosis, you address the infection and the chronic disease, uh, you use a special type of laser, as you can see here, an ozone, and then a nice bioceramic sealer to, uh, to close that up. Uh, so like I said before, ozone, is an is, uh, uh, adjunct to dentistry, among other things. Uh, let's switch gears now and talk a little bit about regeneration. I brushed on, um, upon gum disease, and when it comes to gum disease, surgery is not the only answer. We can do some conservative treatments, and then when we need to regenerate, we could use some biologic approaches and try to regenerate with different types of uh, material that are all biological. Uh, one of which could be your own blood. We take some peripherally, peripheral blood, we spin it down, and we get this platelet-rich fibrin where it has all these growth factors that can regenerate uh, tissues. If we, do, if we do need to replace teeth, we can do it uh, in a very advanced way. We have guided surgery that combines this three-dimensional uh, diagnosis that we were talking about before. And instead of cutting and doing this big surgery, it's almost like laparoscopic surgery. Right? What would you rather have, open heart surgery or lapar laparoscopic? It's a minimally invasive, uh, better results, safer, and more comfortable for the patient. Speaking, for, speaking about uh, more comfortable for the patient, there are patients, and I know many of us in this room, that are dental phobics, right? I respect that and I recognize it, and I want to try to treat it in the um, lowest level possible. And if that has to do with basically uh, doing a warm neck wrap or essential oils, uh, or ne uh, lavender warm uh, towels, uh, that's, that's great. If not, maybe we can do it somewhere, some, in another way, for example, with nitrous oxide, or an anti-anxiety medication, or the ultimate IV sedation. So to recap, there's a lot of diseases that can be prevented, uh, and a lot of diseases that you can actually see just from looking at the oral cavity, and it's all about optimal wellness and enhanced diagnostics and biomimetic dentistry. I hope this was helpful for you. You guys have been a great crowd. Thank you so much.